everyone and welcome to Crown Melbourne and to the Aussie Millions Cash Game. Now we're having a fabulous afternoon here at South Bank, but I'm pretty excited to get inside because there is so much cash about to be thrown around. Now, these players certainly aren't penny pinching. Let's get inside and catch all the action. Yes, indeed. You are with the Aussie Millions Poker Championship High Stakes Cash Game. The names you are looking at on that leaderboard, or it's a bit of a balance sheet. The names that have white numbers next to them, they're making money. The ones that have red next to them, they are not making money. So to sit down at this table is a whopping $250,000 cash. In cash, you can reload at any time. You can get up and go and have dinner, make a phone call, come back. It's much more casual, but the stakes are enormous. I sit next to 2007. APPT Grand Final winner, Grant Levy. Grant, we've seen a lot of chips flying around at this table um, and some big names doing it. Yeah, we have, certainly. The uh, the player that's struggling the most, Isaac Haxton on our screen there. You can see he's changed seats. He's not sitting with uh, Low anymore. He was maybe receiving a little bit of bad juju. <laughs> he gets up from the table. <laughs> well, we have a bit of a pot brewing here. Max Alter got from Germany with pocket eights. Patrick Antonius. No stranger to the high stakes cash game world. He has pocket sevens and it looks like there's been a third bet, a raise by Doug Polk. He has King Jack off suit. Around to a new player, Grant. Yeah, Paul, that is Paul Foy, a Hong Kong businessman. Spends a lot of time in Macau playing the high stakes cash games. Good mates with Richard Yong, who we've seen previously in this high stakes cash game. Richard's off having a bite to eat. Paul has taken his seat. Well, Max Alter got it with pocket eights. He's going to fold to the three bed of Doug Polk. Over to Antonius now. Pocket sevens. Tough spot for uh, for Max there. He had Patrick still to act, so he's just decided to play it cautiously and let it go. And Patrick's not going to... There's a lot of dead money in there now that Max has folded, so Patrick makes the right call. Hopes to hit a set. The pot already over $70,000. The flop. A King Jack deuce flop. Yeah, well, that hits Doug just about as hard as it possibly, possibly can. Patrick's missed. Doug being the pre-flop aggressor, I'm sure he's going to lead out here. Cash game is so much more about how much can you extract. I know that's a very big factor in tournament, but it's real money. It is real money, and there's a lot of it. Uh, they're a lot deeper in a cash game than in, uh, in a poker tournament. Uh, stack sizes in poker tournament, usually around about the 40 or 50 big blinds. Cash game, they're a lot deeper. Well, that gets rid of Antonius, a better 43,000. So Doug Polk starts nicely, a pot of just under 120,000 in total as he collects his chips and adds them to his stack, the player from the United States. As you can see, Phil Ivey, he is the most profiting player at this table with $357,000 in white up the top right-hand corner. Paul Newey, 100000 Doug Polk, 213 All the way down the bottom, as Grant mentioned, is Ike Haxton. He's down a quarter of a million dollars. Max Alter got 184 and so on. Let's see how our new player goes. Well, I think you'll find Isaac's down more to the tune of about 500000 Remember, he has bought in three times. So if he's sitting there with 250000 in front of him, it means he's down a cool half a million. Yeah, but what's a half a million between friends? There's <laughs> Phil Ivey. He raises it up. Raise to $6,000. Round to Paul. Let's see if he elects to get involved. Ivey with seven, eight of hearts. Creative kind of hand. That's a good cash game hand. Raise to 17000 Well, he comes in and he three bets Phil Ivey. He sits down and raises the biggest player in the world. And Paul Newey behind him immediately calls. So Newey with 9, 10 of diamonds. We don't know what Pua has yet. It's always fraught with danger, just cold calling a three bet. Oh. Phil Ivey still to act. And Paul Newey wanting to get involved. He hasn't played a hand for a little while. He does have 10, 9 of diamonds. It's a pretty little hand. Well, both players call. We go to a flop and look at this. A 6, 8, 9 flop. That's an action flop. Oh, yeah. Pair and straight draw for Ivy. That's pair and open-ender. Paul knew he has top pair, and he's got the gut shot. We know one of the sevens that he needs is out, and the ten is no good for him. Well, now we know why there was a raise by Hua. He had ace-king off suit, but that's not playing very well on that board. Well, it's a terrible flop for ace-king. Mm -hmm. Three-handed. That's a big, big bet here. 
Very protective style bet, 47,000. Over to Ivy now with a pair and a straight draw. It's really hard to call this with Paul Foy to act behind, but Phil Ivy is Phil Ivy for a reason. <laughs> and he's the best in the business. Remember, oh. Phil Ivy actually covers Paul Newey, and they have 600,000 minimum on the table here. The turn, a black jack of spades. Well, that improves Newey to an open-ended draw, but it brings a third spade. Now, remember, Phil has checked called on the flop, which could represent a draw. Oh, oh wow. 000. Phil Ivey just picked up $100,000 in plaques and bet in to Paul Newey. Like I said, Phil Ivey. <laughs> you just have to say his name, don't you? Phil Ivey. <laughs> <laughs> Action on the Brit now, who's got such a big decision to make. Now, we talk about pressure in tournaments, but that is a quarter of a million dollars in the middle. And the Brit, who's kind of represented a bit of a tight game, Grant. Well, he was involved early and he hasn't played a hand for a little while. He bet just about full pot on the, on the flop there. And Phil Ivey come along with the call. And now the flush has got there. And Paul Newey, I think, makes a good fold. Even though he's in front, he just can't continue with that hand. And that will show you right there how Phil Ivey works. He puts as much pressure on any player as you can imagine. And you can imagine what kind of pressure it is when you're talking about real cash. And we'll be back with more high stakes cash game here at the Aussie Millions. One of the many benefits of being a PokerStars Pro is getting chauffeured around in one of the Aussie Millions Chryslers. I jumped in for a ride with Selena Lynn on her day off from the poker tables. Selena, a past Melbourneian, now resides in Macau. Now Macau's quite crazy, isn't it? It's a bit mental over there. It is. What's it, it is. like to live there and, and how do you relax? Um, it's pretty much the Las Vegas of you know Asia right now. But to be honest, I do enjoy the laid backness of it. It reminds me a lot of Melbourne. As relaxing as Melbourne can be, Selena's mind is only on one thing, the Aussie millions. Do you ever get nervous and, and how do you manage that? Um, definitely. If you the only girl usually sitting on a table full of boys, you get nervous. I don't think they see me as a girl at the table. Yeah. Some poker players do, but the professional ones just go, I'm going to treat her as if she's any other poker player. Right? Okay. For me, I do feel like I get stared down more. They try to intimidate me more. Mm. I think that you just have to keep the mentality that you're aware of that. and. Mm. Maybe you don't let, let it on that mm. you know you're being intimidated, and you can use that to your advantage as well while, while you play. I think if you are used to it, you can really, really use that as your weapon instead. Now, do you have any hobbies away from poker? I actually enjoy a lot of my time playing board games. I know it's such a nerdy thing to say at, at this <laughs> age, you're playing board games, you know? But it's just one of those things that you know gets everybody together. You get some snacks, you get you know a glass of red wine. And, really good fun. It's so much fun. It's it one is. of my favourite things it to is. do. <laughs> now I could happily spend all day relaxing in the back of a car as luxurious as this one, but for now let's get back to the table to see what's happening. Welcome back to the Aussie Millions. You are watching High Stakes Cash Game. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that is real cash they are playing with. $250,000 to sit down. You can reload and cash up at any time. Some of the biggest players in the world, some of the biggest pots, and that is the biggest player in the world, Phil Ivey, who is raising it up. And we can see those plaques there. They're worth 25,000 each. The blue chips, which Paul Foy has a billion of, they're worth 1,000 each, and the orange ones are 5,000. Every player here is in for a minimum of 250,000. Well, we have a four-way pot on an 875 board. Very interesting. We've got Ivy here with ace four. Altagot with pocket sixes. That's interesting for him too. Newey with jack three of clubs. And we still don't know what Paul Fua has. Altagot with the open-ended straight draw. He has the benefit of having two sixes. So there's blockers to the straight. He's got two blockers. So he's got to like his hand a little bit. It checks around. A deuce, a black deuce of clubs on the turn. Paul Newey turns a flush draw. Alter got still with the open ender. Phil Ivey with the overcard. And the double gut shot draw. Which 
means he needs a three or a six to make a straight. Well, it checks around. And Paul Foy has... Who knows? <laughs> well, he's got the option to bet, and he's going to take it. He's on the button. 17,000 into 26,000. Does that give us an indication of what kind of hand he has? Uh, it gives us an indication of three people checked to him and decided just to have a stab. He could have basically anything here. No one showed any real strength. Alter got calls, and Phil Ivey gets out of the way. The river now is a seven of diamonds. And also, God, if he thinks he was ahead on the turn when he made the call, nothing changes with the seven there. He checks. So open the door for Foy to have another bet. If he does, I like him for a better hand than sixes, <laughs> but I think he's behind now. Well, Foy checks, and they both reveal their cards. And we will now find out what Foy had. He had ace five of clubs, so he also turned a draw. Well, we, well, it makes a bit more sense now, Grant. So, Max Altergott from Germany takes a nice pot. Paul Fouas showing us a little bit more creativity there with Ace Five of Clubs. I'm sure we'll see more from him. And there is Max Altergott's player profile, online heads up specialist in No Limit Hold'em. Um, have you played with him, Grant? I haven't, Paul. No, I haven't played with him. He hasn't been around on the tournament scene for very long. He's been around for. Just under 12 months. His first tournament was just a lazy $1.75 million euro win. <laughs> oh, that's incredible. What a way to start. Folds around to Paul Foy. And Paul's no stranger to high stakes cash games. He likes to push the chips around a little bit. We haven't seen that much of him yet, but I imagine he's going to get active at some stage. He likes to create big pots. Big action. Well, we know he's opened with a five of clubs. We're yet to find out what that other card is. Well, that's um, often good enough, Paul. Five of clubs. <laughs> yep. In for a raise. <laughs> Around to Max Altergott, who's been a little bit active early. It looks like he's coming in for a three bet or a raise. Yeah, out of position there in the small blind. Don't want to play pots out of position when you can avoid it. Remember, if you are out of position, you have to act first, which gives the other players... More clues as to what you might be holding and at the strength of your hand. Mm -hmm. got raises with ace-queen offsuit and Hua makes the call. So uh, I think it makes it a bit more interesting when we don't know what he has. <laughs> so a king-queen six-flop. So a queen pairs for Altergot. We know at best Hua has one pair. And we know Altergot has middle pair with top kicker. And check. it goes check, check on the flop. We go to the turn. It is an ace of hearts. Well, Max feels a little bit better about his hand now. <laughs> Two pair. We know that is definitely in front. Doesn't matter what Foy's other card is. And Max would be hoping he's got ace five of clubs. Well, with the pot, a little over 70,000 now. With that raise making it 123,000 with that bet. And Foy folds. So once again, Max takes another pot. Gives us a little bit of a wave as well. He's looking a bit robotic with those sunglasses, but I assure you he knows how to play. He's no robot. And we'll be back with more high stakes cash games here at the Aussie Millions. Welcome back to the 2014 Aussie Millions Poker Championships. And as a part of that series, is one of the biggest cash games in the world. And you are looking right at it. It is the $250,000 high stakes cash game. This is the leaderboard, which acts as a balance sheet for us. On the right-hand side, you'll see the figures in white. That means the players are winning money. And the red, that means they're losing money. Patrick Antonius with a little bit of work to do, as does Max Altergott, both in the red for about 200 grand. And Phil Ivey, what a surprise. He sits on top with 350 plus thousand dollars in cash. The action is on Max Altergott from Germany. He folds round to Patrick again. Now, I'm not sure if Patrick's reloaded or not. He seems to have a lot more chips in front of him, Paul. Remember those plaques are worth 25,000. He has at least 15 of those in front of him. Patrick raises it up with pocket sevens around to Ike, who's going to make the call. Ike with Queen Jack of Hearts. 
He's had a very tumultuous first couple of sessions at this table. Yeah, he hasn't lost the monster pot for a little while. <laughs> it's probably about due again. <laughs> uh, Lowe's involved and we don't know his cards. And if you ask our 2007 grand final winner, Grant Lever, he'll tell you it doesn't really matter. The flop is an ace, jack or and a queen. Well, Lowe's run pretty well on this table. He's won a couple of big pots against Isaac. He's called him a couple of times. And he likes to get involved with a lot of hands. He's so unpredictable, Paul. It's hard to actually tell what he has. And accordingly, very hard to play against. Hua with 8-5 of clubs. Antonius with pocket sevens. And Ike Haxton with queen jack of hearts. And he's flopped two pair. Obviously, queen jack is a decent hand on this board. But it's still very vulnerable. Very coordinated flop. Well, Lowe's going to call. He's got the six cool. and an ace. So he's he's caught top pair, and he is behind to Haxton's two pair. But um, Still plenty of cards that he can catch. Oh, oh <laughs> yes, he can. The turn. A six of diamonds. So Lo Xing Fung and Ike Haxton continue their battle. And this time, Lo again getting the better of Haxton on the turn. Still one card to come. Ike Haxton has dumped a lot of chips to Lo. Like I said, though, Paul, it's still a very coordinated board. Now, there's now three diamonds. Getting 35000 The pot now $101,000. Certainly know that Lowe's going to stick around, but not going to go overboard. He calls, wants to see the river. And the river is a five of hearts, so... Lo Xing Fung has the best hand. The pot's 136000 Haxton has been the aggressor. Will he fire again? No, I think he might check it back. No, it checks back. So Ike Haxton with a very good check on the river there. He's going to be loath to see the yeah, win. Isaac actually said, I have a very good hand, but I'm scared you have a flush. No, Isaac, he doesn't have a flush, but still has your beat. And look at that cheeky smile on <laughs> Lo Xing Fung. And Isaac says, I'm not feeling very welcome. Welcome to Macau. Lo Xing Fung. <laughs> Asking Ike, will you come to Macau? Maybe he plays a crown in Macau as well. <laughs> it's a sick needle from Lo Xing Fung. He's taken so much money off Isaac Haxton and he's just said, all right, mate, let's come over to Macau. Drop a few more million to me. Action on Ike Haxton, who's getting a bit beat up by Lo Xing. Option. Ivy. Check. Cards in his hands. Round to low. Folds. Now, you saw... You saw Phil Ivey just check the button. I mentioned earlier that he was away from the table. Check. The fact that he's come back in, it looks like he's posted the blind that he has missed because he's missed his blinds while he was away. The flop, a king, ten, deuce flop. Check. We know that Hua has the nine of diamonds. We don't know what the other player's cards are. Two clubs on that board. Hua has king, nine, offsuit, so he's struck top tear. Newy the five, seven, offsuit. Gets out of the way. The turn, an eight. Hua and Ivy. We still don't know what Phil's cards are. The mysterious Phil Ivy. It's hard enough figuring him out, even if he, if we could see his cards. We can't see his cards. Almost impossible to figure out what Phil's got. He's going to bet into that river race of spades. Makes it 10,000. The pot now 27. We still don't know what Phil has, other than a very, very intimidating glare and a little smirk and a bit of a face thing. He has a lot of chips. That's all we know, Paul. <laughs> Phil looks like he doesn't want to call. Well, he has nine deuce. Maybe that's why. Maybe he's a bit sceptical, but it's a pretty... pretty difficult spot. Surely he won't call here. Oh, yep. Wow, Phil Ivey makes the call with bottom pair. So he really didn't think that Foy had anything. And in the end, Foy made a pretty good bet on the river. Yeah, well, Phil's calling him, hoping he's got queen high. Queen high? Something like that. Something like that from Phil Ivey. But look at that. Our newest player to the table, Paul Foy, takes some chips off the best player in the world. And we'll be back with more action at the Aussie Millions Poker Championships right here at Crown Melbourne. Welcome back to the Aussie Millions Poker Championships High Stakes Cash Games. Here at Crown Melbourne, this is our feature table 
and one of the biggest cash games in the world. It costs $250,000 to sit with these guys. The white figures you see on the right, that is the players that are making money. Yes, that is real cash. And the red ones, well, unfortunately for them, they're not making money. Ike Haxton is, well, he's bleeding, isn't he? He's got $373,000 in losses. And uh, Lo Xing Fung, who's been up and down all the time, you know, with swings, incredible swings, really. Um, he's down now, but that could change at any time. Yes, the yo-yo Lo Xing Fung. It's been up and down, as you say. Very entertaining to watch. So is Paul Foy, for that matter. And just as I say that, the three do three deuce of hearts comes in for a raise. <laughs> well, Max Altergott has raised another 18,000. He has ace jack of diamonds. And a Patrick, who has the button in front of him. Max and Patrick trying to figure out who's more handsome. <laughs> and he makes the call on the button. Patrick with pocket queens. And Patrick's shown a propensity to just call in this cash game with his big hands. Especially with these guys in the blinds too. Very creative players, hoping to get squeezed. Well, Fua, a huge underdog in this pot. Pot of 60,000, hoping to catch a fistful of hearts or, well, he catches bottom pair. Flop is 10-6-3. It's nothing for Patrick to be too concerned about here. He's disguised the strength of his hand by just flat calling on the button there. And look at this, it's checked around. He's going to trap. The turn is a nine now. Now the board is very draw heavy. I can't see Patrick giving another free card. Perhaps waiting for Max to take a stab before he releases the trap. And Max hasn't done that. He's checked. So action's on Patrick. And Patrick can't check again. He needs to get some value from his hand. He makes it 35,000. Up to 94,000 in the middle now. It's a good size bet, but he's just not going to get any action here. Foire folds. Over to Max now. Yeah, he's not going to be stubborn with his hand. He lets it go as well. So Patrick there, flatting pre-flop with pocket queens, like Grant said. Electing to play pretty trappy. And because of that disguise, he, well, he wins a pot of just a little under $100,000 here at the Aussie Millions High Stakes Cash Game. As we can see, Patrick has a lot of those $25,000 plaques there. These players very deep stacked. The exception of Isaac Haxon. Isaac has about 140000 in front of him. Which is still 70 big blinds, so there's still plenty of wiggle room there. Lo Xing Fung will join the pot with King Queen offsuit. Round to Max Altergott with King 10 offsuit. Isaac collecting the fold, he doesn't want to play a hand with Lo. He's just been beating him up all day. Well, Doug Polk with Ace 9 offsuit and Phil Ivy. With 9-5 off suit. So the flop, King Jack Deuce. Check. This will cost Altergott money, I would imagine. Yeah, well, low. We know how creative he is. We haven't seen him play too many premium hands yet. <laughs> he checks. And he has top pair with a good kicker. I'd be interested to see how he plays this. Well, that might be a good time. He's inducing a bet from Max, who also has top pair. But Lowe has him dominated. Folds around and look at this. Phil Ivey's coming in. Yeah, well, I mean, you've got to call with the 9-5 here. <laughs> Obviously, Phil's plan is to pick it up on a later street. Little does he know his two opponents have a good hand. People at home thinking, well, what's Phil doing with 9 high here? Obviously, he has a plan. So he's floated just so he can try and pick it up with a bluff on the turn or the river. Will Lowe take his option and bet this time? The last time he didn't bet with top pair, he does this time. 25,000 is the bet. Now back over to Max, who bet flop. And he's got the same top pair, but his 10 means he is well behind. And it looks a very bluffy line from Lowe. He's check called the flop and now he's leading the turn. It looks bluffy. He's bet very big. He's bet full pot. I think Phil's, Phil's just realising his plan hasn't worked. He can't do much about that. Full pot and call on the on the uh, turn there. 
the river and eight of hearts. Doesn't change anything. Low, now with the best hand, and he's disguised his hand well. He's checked here. Will Max Altergott take a stab? Little does he know how much money it'll cost him. And again, <coughs> Lowe's played this hand v with a very bluffy line. Check calling the flop. Leading big on the turn. Now he's checked again. Looks like he's given up. It's like, oh, well, my plan hasn't worked. I give up. He's actually trapping here. And Max is going to take the bait. Betting $35,000. $35,000. And he almost looks convinced that he's beaten. 113000 in the middle. Well, I haven't seen him fold too many of these yet, Paul. I expect a call. And he's reached for the chips. And <laughs> in they go. You can do it. Yes. Yes, you can. He calls. <laughs> so he will take a nice pot with the best hand. And in actual fact, by checking, like you said, Grant, he, he disguised his hand and induced. He induced. Well, it wasn't a bluff, but he got max value for his hand. Well... What we, what we call that, Max has just value towned himself. <laughs> <laughs> and he can't be blamed against Lowe. Lowe's played some unconventional hands. We'll be back with more high stakes cash games here at the Aussie Millions. Thanks for joining us at the Aussie Millions Poker Championships 2014. This is the high stakes cash game. 250 grand and you can sit down, you can reload at any time, you can take a break and do whatever you like at this kind of money. <laughs> On the right hand side you'll see white figures, they are the profit figures. And the red ones unfortunately they are the losses. Phil Ivey is the most profiting player at this table at this stage with 312,000. And Ike Haxton, well, he's the one that's losing the most. He's sitting on a loss of about $335,000. There is one of the most entertaining players you will see, Lo Xing Fung. He's kept us very, very curious. He's very creative, and he is certainly courageous. We can see Doug Polk from the United States. He's involved with Ace Queen Offsuit. Our newest player, Paul Fua, he raises it up to 23000 Folds around. There you see Patrick Antonius in shot. Round to Polk now. Looks like he's going to come in for another raise. Raise. Wow. 58,000. Remember these guys are very deep stacked. They're sitting with at least 300,000. So you think there's 150 big blinds effective stacks. Doug's three bet with the ace queen. What does he do if he gets four bet here? Does he want to get in 150 big blinds pre flop? It's a tough spot because if he gets re raised here, it's almost like he's turning the ace queen into a bluff. And we don't know what Fua has, so incredibly, this is kind of like the end of a thriller movie. We don't know the ending of it. <laughs> I think he has a little something something, Paul. He's called the four bet. <laughs> With over a hundred grand in the middle, I can't wait to see how it ends. The flop, an eight five deuce. There you see, hundred and twenty one thousand dollars. There's so much money in the middle. Doug can't just uh, check now that he's missed. Obviously, he has to continue. He's going to continue with a decent bet. Betting fifty six thousand. And Fua takes a look at his hand, and we see pocket jacks. So he's sitting on a monster here. Yeah, it's a sexy little flop for Jax. He has the overpair to the board. In a four-bet pot, he's got to be pretty comfortable. Obviously, there's still some hands that beat him, that's for sure. Well, he's not electing to get too aggressive. He's just calling. We're going to see a turn. The king of hearts on the turn. Now, obviously, that hasn't hit either player, but it could. It could slow them down. Could be a bit of a scare card. Will Polk fire again? It looks like Doug is pretty keen to empty the clip here. What I mean by that is bet on the turn, set it up for a river shove. Waiting for the amount from the dealer. And the way this hand's played out, Doug definitely f uh, four bets a hand like ace-king. He's definitely going to fire again on the flop. 
Now that the king has landed, he can certainly represent a hand like ace king. Remember, Foire is also behind queens, kings, aces pre flop. The pot, a staggering $320,000. The action back on Foire, who probably should have raised on the flop. Well, he was very, very comfortable on the flop. Now, not as comfortable. And I, Wow, uh, look at that. I'm actually, I like the line he took on the flop. If he did raise there on the yeah. flop, he's turning it into a bluff with the jacks. Well, Doug Polk's four bet pre flop meant he continued with that aggressive line, like Grant said, and it allowed him to take it all the way. And look at the chips that he's starting to amass now. So in this hand, you have an example of how aggression really pays off. Doug Polk raises with ace-queen, he gets re-raised, and then he decides to four-bet it to really represent something strong. And when you're playing deep cash game poker and you got a pair of jacks, not a lot of good situations can happen. He comes three cards under a jack, and of course, Polk continues with ace-queen, but now the turn's a king. And Polk set up this bluff on the turn because he four-bet it before the flop. So now Fu has to think to himself, well, I can't beat ace-king, I can't beat queens, kings, aces, and he decides to make a fold in this spot that in the long run will probably be good. In this case, it wasn't the right decision. Back to our feature table here at the High Stakes Cash Game at the Aussie Millions 2014. If you have a spare $250,000, please give us a call. <laughs> oh, Paul, you take my seat here. I'm going. <laughs> Patrick Antonius, who's been here year after year at the Aussie Millions. He loves it here. Had lots of success. He raises it up with pocket sevens. It feels like pa Patrick's had this hand quite a few times at this cash table. Hasn't really worked for him. Let's see if it works now. Paul Foire, he makes the call. Paul Foire starting to get pretty active. Here comes the flop, a 10-8-4 flop. It's not a bad flop for Patrick. Yeah, you're certainly going to continue here. 12, well, he has Foire dominated with Queen 7. However, that won't stop him. Yeah, the unpredictable Foire has the power of position here. He's going to float, try and take it away on the turn. Patrick fires, Foire calls the turn. A Queen of Diamonds, wouldn't you know it? Well, he can take it away on the turn now, Paul. Just with the top pair. Well, the turn completes a few draws too, so it goes check, check. And the river, a jack of diamonds. And now there's four to a straight there. So many hands that Patrick loses to. I can see this going. Check, bet, fold. Will Foire value bet Patrick? I don't think he'd get a call anyway. But he has the button and he has the best hand. Should I? Shouldn't I? No, he checks. So he's going to roll over his queen and it'll be good enough to take a pot of $43,000. So, Patrick, those sevens aren't working for you, mate. Maybe you should fold them. He's not really having a great day, Patrick. He's certainly in the red. Well, Patrick Antonius has had many great days over the years at the Aussie Millions. So many deep runs. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back with more high-stakes cash games here at the Aussie Millions. And welcome back to the Aussie Millions Poker Championships in 2014. You are watching the High Stakes Cash Game, one of the biggest cash games in the world. The chips you are about to see on this table, they are actually money. That is cash they are playing with. And there is the balance sheet. So you can see on top, Phil Ivey, if the, if the player has a white figure next to him, then that means that he's making money. If he has a red figure, it means he's losing money. Right down the bottom, you saw Ike Haxton. Well, he's well into the red. And Phil Ivey, best player in the world. He's right on top of that balance sheet. <laughs> he's on top of the balance sheet a lot of the time. And we saw Doug Polk there. He's involved here with pocket tens. We don't know what Phil Ivey's hand is. And Lowe is involved as well. Grant Levy, 2007 grand final APPT winner. Grant, gee, there's been some fireworks at this table. Oh yeah, there's been some big pots, a few coolers. Unfortunately, Isaac Haxton's been on the end of every single one of those. He's down a cool half a million. Well, Polk raised with 10s, okay, so Ivy called, thousands. low called, and Foire, look at this. He's made a very creative fat raise with Jack Seven of Hearts. He's putting the pressure on. It's a nice little spot. 
It makes it very hard for Doug Polk if he doesn't have a premium hand. In this case, he has a very strong hand in pocket tens. But there's a raise and two calls in front of him. Open the door for a squeeze from Foix. It's not going to work on this occasion. Well, he calls Ivy Mux and Low with a three a of three, diamonds. three, so <laughs> it's only going to cost you 40000 No, yes, no. Low says no this time. Two players to the flop. <laughs> he looks disgusted about having to fold to look at him. <laughs> he just loves being involved. Here we go. Foix versus Polk. The flop. Ace, ace, three. So, well, Polk's tens are best. He'd still be relatively comfortable with the tens. The fact that there's two aces on the board, it's less likely that Foix actually has an ace in his hand. Obviously, he can have jacks through kings. And obviously, don't discount a hand like ace-king. It's just less likely that he has it, given there's two of them on the board. Well, the turn, an interesting two of hearts now. That gives him a backdoor flush draw. Anyone who knows poker knows that the turn always brings more outs. <laughs> and there we go. He gets there on the river with the jack. Wow. So he's caught the jack on the river. Polk's tens are no longer best. 100k in the middle. Can he get an anything out of him? Well, the jack of clubs brings a flush. I'm pretty sure Doug would have found out a little bit earlier if Paul was on a draw. Betting 42,000. He's probably going to pay this up, and I think he might as well. Polk doesn't want to call. Certainly doesn't have him on the ace. What kind of hands can he have here? King, queens. He's not going to turn a hand like nines or eights into a bluff. So Doug's going to think, do I ha does he have a hand like king, queen or something along those lines? No help. Or just a complete air ball. Ten's not beating a lot of legitimate hands. It's beating all the bluffs, obviously. Well, he's got Doug Polk pretty convinced that he's bluffing. Doesn't look comfortable about it. He wants to see it, so he's going to put the money in and he's going to be very disappointed that the river gave him the winning hand. A little bit of a chuckle too. <laughs> That's how we roll. That's what Lowe's saying. Look at him. Pretty happy with it. Well, he turned a flush draw and he got there on the river with a blackjack. So Paul Foix starting to exert his influence on this cash table. And the chips are flying. <laughs> They bring a lot of value to a cash table like this. So a lot of guys like to play with them because they know they splash around in pots, but I'll tell you what, they're hard to play against. There you see Phil Ivey sitting on top and all those players in white, they're making money and all the guys in red are losing it. Ike Haxton, the biggest of them all. He's down quite a bit of money. He's run into Lo Xing Fung's hands so many times at this table and yet Lo's kind of almost in the even area. Grant Levy, are you surprised by anything you've seen so far? Oh, not really. I mean, the unpredictable nature of uh, the guys from Macau, uh, like I said, they bring a lot of value to the table. But, yeah. you know, if they start card racking or hitting, hitting some hands, there's going to be some big pots and someone's going to get coolered or be on the receiving end of a beat. And that has been the case today. Well, you can see here, Fuas picked up pocket tens and he's involved. Lowe's also involved. And, of course, the other end of it, Paul, is when they get legitimate hands like this... Uh, they're kind of hard to believe. No, Ike choosing not to get involved this time. Neither does Doug Polk. And these two will go heads up. Anything could happen. 7-8 of clubs versus pocket 10s. And the flop is a 10-9 deuce flop. Well, yeah, anything can happen. Guaranteed, Paul, this is going to be a big pot. A draw against top set. These guys have obviously played together a lot as well. It looks like a bet and a call. Check. The turn is a six, so the straight's there now. So a dominant set of tens gets crushed on the turn. Okay, now let's just count how many chips they have in front, Paul, because that's about how big the pot's going to get by the end of it. All those plaques, all those orange chips and blue chips, Look at they're going to find their way into the middle here. He just leaned over and looked at the amount of chips he had. He's holding the nuts at this stage, and he leaned over and looked at his stack and said, how much of that can I get? And Paul Foix is like, okay, you can take all of this, no problems. I've got top set. I love these guys. They're the most entertaining players I've seen in such a long time. Foix still has a set of tens. It's a monster hand. 
this seven, eight, nine, ten. Straight. Straight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what to make of this, but I'm pretty sure Lo was just... All in. Named, oh, wow. <laughs> all in? He announces all in. Massive overshove. Seven. <laughs> Mark, the eight can of four. <laughs> Lo can't believe it. Just casually eating all his noodles. In, uh, six, nine. Pocket six. Call. Wow, he's just called. I can't wait to see how big this pot is. It's almost a million dollars in the middle. He has called with top set. Oh, seven it. <laughs> well, what else, what else can you say after losing a pot of... Well, he hasn't lost yet. How many outs has he got, Grant? Ten? Yeah, well, he's got uh, three, six, nine, ten. Yeah, he's got ten outs. Ten outs to the river. How many times would you like to You buy some, You know? You know, 400... How much I bet on the turn? They're trying to figure out how much... 980. 880. Is in the middle. We can tell you it's pretty close to a million, and we had that figured out on the f on the flop. <laughs> well, they should have had that discussion a little bit earlier, perhaps. Now there's a million dollars in the middle. I mean, the hand plays itself, Paul. In the straight versus top set. <laughs> Running it once or twice, sorry. Once. Yeah, once please, Fua says. He's a big what? underdog here. Pure gamble. Pure gamble from Fua. Running it once? Uh, they were discussing whether they wanted to run it twice. Yeah, yes. Two, yeah. six, one. Okay. Squeeze it. Squeeze it. Yes. On the river is an ace of hearts, and that decides an amazing pot of almost $1 million dollars will go to Lo Xing Fung. He turned a straight and crushed Fua's set of tens. Incredible. That is just incredible. Grant Levy is sitting aside me and I can almost tell that you're as stunned as I am. Ah, oh, that's pretty to watch. Just a massive cooler. And all the guys are actually sitting on the table thinking, well, he's got a million. I'm going to get every single chip out of his stack. Well, we have certainly seen the chips fly around here at the high stakes cash games of the Aussie Millions. It's one of the feature events. A seat here, $250,000. The chips are flying from left to right, but no bigger than that last pot between Lo Xing Fung and Paul Fua. A $1 million pot. No wonder they come from all over the world to play this game. We will see you next time as we watch more high-stakes cash games here at the Aussie Millions.